Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, or Source 4 Figure and Model Updates every Wednesday and Friday. So today on Figure Friday I'm doing part 3 of the DG Artwork Black Cohort Raccoon Operator in 75mm resin. So as you can see he's come a little ways from the blocking colors. The pseudo cry cam multicam pattern on his trousers has uh, been realized a little bit more with a couple of squiggles, some dots in bone alongside some uh, burnt umber little squiggles that sort of match so they pair off of each other quite well. A couple of details have been realized. The war belt's done just in a basic gunship green and then I did some basic highlights on that. Uh, the shoes are basic combat shoes. Yeah, holster for the Glock. I did some looking on T-Rex arms like I said I was going to and I decided to just go with a basic coyote brown. Nothing too fancy there. The carbine, I don't know if it'll come out in the camera, but what I did was I decided on the upper and lower receiver to do uh, an overall sort of cam green uh, and then these two or three sort of diagonal lines of middle stone and they were just supposed to look like they were sprayed with Duracoat just sort of rough to break up the outline and then over top of that I used Vallejo German Grey, which, if you guys know, is a very dark grey, and I sort of dry brushed over that, and that sort of brought out some of the high weather areas, and where his hands would be, you know, where he moves around, stuff like the uh, forward assist spot around the magwell, etc, etc. Uh, got some other details back here, the camelback hydration tube, his communication gear there, and it's also tight in there. I don't know if it's visible. But detailed that. The inside of the hoodie, uh, I made sure to do that in off-white so it stands out a little bit better. And his scarf is a sort of dark pale blue to give a little bit of color contrast on there, which pairs off well with the overall yellowy green of the jacket. So yeah. Very happy with the way he's turned out so far. Uh, keep in mind the the chamber is gleaming pretty well so far. This guy has been sealed with a decent coat of Future Floor Wax, and that's why he looks sort of shiny right now. Yeah, but that's dried, and so now I'm going to go on to the oil uh, washing process, which is going to bring out some more of the definition, add some really cool sharp lines to him, and yeah. Moving on, same process is going to happen to the base here. As you can see, it's pretty shiny. Uh, what I did was, I just, like I said, I was just going to mask it off, do a rough pass with some white primer and then some black primer just to sort of make it look a little interesting. I haven't decided if I'm going to do any streaking with the oils, but, you know, anything's in the cards at the point, this point. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Uh, I added a couple of browns and some olive drab to the base, just really thin down. Vallejo model air is great for that because it's already thin pretty well. Put a little water in it, sort of scrunch it in with a, an old brush, and that's basic weathering 101 done right there. Yeah, So, come along pretty well, I gotta say. I don't know about this this pattern, but you know what? It's it's the base, it's a Tetley tea can. You know, it looks better than the uh, nutrition information. So yeah, let's move on, and I'm going to show you my setup for the oils. So we're back with the basic tray palette, if you want to call it that, for oil paint mixing that I use. And so these are really easy to find. You can uh, wear the hell out of them and then throw them away or keep them clean like I do. I usually give them a scrub down with this liquid, which is mineral spirits, and that's also the same liquid that I use to thin all my oil paints with for washes. So I'm just going to throw all the colors up here on the screen like Bob Ross does. Uh, a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of raw sienna, a bit of raw umber, and classic burnt umber. So the brand doesn't seem to matter. I don't know enough about oils to uh, make a difference, but I know if I could get my hands on them, I'd go with the Uptang uh, purpose-made modelers oils those seem to be uh, designed for this sort of detail so we've got all of our colors here separated out I'm gonna use a uh, old brush and just you only need sort of the size of a pea mix it in there 
I'm going to need to add a little more mineral spirit to that, but you can see that it's sort of the consistency of milk. And that's decent for um, acrylic washes. It's probably good enough for this. I'm going to take it farther than that, though. I'm going to add a little more spirit to that. Bring it up the side. And there we go. And there's a basic oil wash. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray. So Payne's Gray looks black on the screen. It's actually not. It's a, uh, a really, really dark gray-blue. And using black, even at this stage, probably isn't wise. Um, in any scale, it'll just look odd. It'll look like there's a void on your detail. Um, but, yeah, so that thin that down. Darkened her up. She looks good. Now, I don't usually paint on the screen because my setup isn't really made for it. But basically, I'm just going to tap this in. So I just sort of tapped it in there. Show that. So that's what that looks like now. So it's all covered on there pretty well. Uh, standard procedure is to let it sit for 15 minutes, take a clean brush with uh, a little pot of mineral spirits, and then go over the areas and clean up any wash you don't want to have, and just leave it in the recesses or leave it all over if it's like an oil spill or an oil stain or something like that. So yeah, that's my uh, process for oil washing. I'm going to be doing it in far greater detail uh, when I do the the raccoon operator. Um, yeah, very exciting stuff. Uh, so my process is going to be, got this all planned out, uh, I'm going to put oils on, leave that for 24 hours to dry. Oils take a really long time to dry, keep that in mind. Then when they're fully dried, I'm going to seal them with some Tamiya flat out of an airbrush, seal the base as well, give that a little time to dry, do the pigments, seal them in with some Tamiya flat, he goes on the base, the base is basically done at that point, but I'm going to go a little step further and airbrush a little bit of future floor wax just on the areas, sort of the low ground here, uh, and around his feet, probably up the wall a little bit, and then I'm going to start using this, which I did a couple of tests with on some small bases, and I'm really happy with the results. Water texture, I haven't worked really with using pigments in it yet, but, uh, you know, it's translucent. I'll make the area beneath it really dark, sort of green, filthy looking. That'll show through. So yeah, very exciting stuff. Can't wait to uh, show this figure off finished. Thanks very much for watching. Check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. Links in the description below. Follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.